Hey everyone, today we're looking at this desert temple environment and how to paint it from scratch, step by step. My name is Victor, I'm a concept artist, so let's get started with the process. Before starting to work with colors, you want to flesh out your idea a little bit. It could be a color or black and white thumbnail sketch, like this one I did in a previous video, or a simple line work sketch, like we're doing right now. Oftentimes this part is the toughest, you also probably shouldn't rush this stage, you shouldn't rush painting at all, but that's another topic. And the reason is, the drawing is what serves as the foundation for the whole painting later on. And I'm kind of eyeballing the perspective here, but depending on how much experience you have with it, you might want to put down some perspective grids to figure out where the vanishing points are. The downside of working without them is that later on you might find some mistakes or inconsistencies and you'll just have to adjust those elements whenever you see that they're off. All right, when you're done with the line work, you can jump in with colors. Starting from the background uh, is oftentimes the easiest approach, so we're gonna have some really blue sky, a big surprise, and then try to figure out the rest until all of your main elements are blocked in with just flat color. Working with a larger brush stroke is better at this step. Never ever work with small brush strokes. <laughs> no, really, but what I mean is it's all about efficiency and specifically in the beginning of the process, you wanna be a bit more decisive with your shapes so you don't have to meddle with smaller brush strokes. So try to pick something convenient for you, a bigger textured brush stroke to block in all those main shapes and check out the readability, check out how the silhouettes work with each other and the relation between the values. Values. Notice that I also constantly adjust and look at the values and I'm using simple adjustment tools like uh, the curve editor or just the brightness adjustment. I'm making sure that everything reads as good as possible. Lighting is really important and after you have some silhouettes and shapes ready, you can start by working a little bit on your form. Figure out where is your light source and start indicating which planes are facing the light and which ones are in the shadow. I've also added some clouds in the background to add extra depth to the whole scene, but also to frame the composition a little bit. I figure since we're going for this slightly stylized look, we can try to get the clouds to be a shape that frames the image and kind of points at our focal area at the huge crystal on the temple. The more tools you can use to drive the contrast on your focal area, the better. But of course, don't overdo it. You don't want to have something noisy with a lot of contrast. It all has to be balanced. All right, I'm trying to develop the middle ground together with the foreground. We have to push the values a bit first to get a feeling of light hitting the planes and also describe them a little better. I'm thinking to keep the foreground in the shadows and also the top of the temple as well. It will add some additional contrast to our focal area and make the composition a little bit more interesting, a bit more epic. Actually, it's quite important to mention when you design something, try to figure out ways to add more interest for the viewer. So not just a plain wall, for example, but with some bevels or parts that extrude, or maybe some textural variation, color, and so on. Up until now, we've been working on the major forms and the contrast between them, and now slowly I'm switching to a more detail-oriented phase. So more often you can see me zoom in and work on some smaller area, adding some variation for the materials, 
making sure that we have a feeling that the surface of the building has some sort of layers and it's not just like a monolith or something like that. And it's really and it's really a good idea if you're not going to be stuck in one place but spend enough time on all the planes and areas of interest. That being said, definitely start with the focal point. In our case, it's this big crystal, so a little bit of extra detail, highlights will, will go a long way to make the impression overall better. Another thing I'm looking at is the middle ground and the fact that it can be designed a little bit better. So I'm trying to separate the planes a little bit more, make it look like between the character and his goal there's like a huge pit or something. So it's not like a walk in the park. In this case it always helps to add a little bit of atmosphere and push the values to show that there is some distance between the planes. Alright, some finishing touches, you might want to try to push the contrast where the crystal area is, add some glow, make sure that there are some interesting vibrant color accents here and there, and I think we can call it a day for this sketch. 
Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed the process. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps a lot. Don't forget to drop any questions or comments you have about the process. I'm trying to answer as many as I can. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Coming soon.